Welcome to this video that uh, will treat stochastic inventory theory in the course operations management, operations analysis. We will be looking in this video at uh, when we are facing uncertainty in demand and uh, how to determine if we have uncertain demand then um, the order quantity and the reorder point um, of our inventory system. Um, we have um, two um, possibilities here, or I will show you two uh, methods or two ways of uh, dealing with uncertainty. And uh, then we will be looking at uh, when we have um, a product characteristic where um, the product faces um, perishability, meaning that um, we cannot sell the, um, the product um, the next time period. Um, examples to this are when, uh, for instance, uh, we are an airline and we are selling places uh, on a plane. Um, after the plane has, uh, has started off, uh, we cannot sell the place uh, that is empty anymore to a customer. And this is where we are talking about having a perishable item that we cannot sell anymore after a certain amount of time to the uh, original selling price. Mm, we will start with, uh, with uh, looking upon uh, how to incorporate uncertainty in, in inventory management and uh, to understand how we can calculate the order uh, quantity and uh, or the reorder quantity and the reorder point. Um, we can apply these methods or these models um, to a supply chain management system where we have external suppliers as well as for internal ordering when we have uh, the production capacity uh, internal in the company. So uh, we will be looking at first at a stochastic continuous review inventory model, so-called QR models that deal with some kind of uncertainty in demand and that face uh, or that focus on uh, determining the reorder point and the reorder quantity. So um, a policy in this QR models are whenever we have the inventory level that uh, drops to a certain uh, unit R, uh, then we would place an order Q uh, for more units to replenish our inventory. Um, just shortly, the assumptions that are always important to, to, our, to understand uh, how our model works. We are um, facing in this very basic model, uh, we are looking at a single product. Uh, we look on the inventory level in a continuous manner. That means, for instance, that um, just shortly, if we look at our inventory level, this is time, this is inventory, and we have Q in inventory, uh, then it depletes until it drops to zero, and uh, we know exactly at any and we know exactly at any point in time um, the amount of our inventory. Um, so, we have a continuous depletion and a continuous review. Um, at a contrary, when uh, we would know, um, or when we look just periodically in our inventory, uh, then we know just at certain points in time how um, our inventory looks like. So this would be then uh, the continuous, uh, the period, periodic review method. Here we are looking at the continuous uh, review model. So the decisions, uh, as already told, are made in choosing uh, the reorder quantity and the reorder um, point in time. And we have, or we are assuming that we have a positive lead time the, that we have uncertain demand. And we are also um, looking at backlogs. Uh, so they are allowed 
and uh, filled once uh, the order arrives. So we have to order um, or we have to take into consideration in our reorder quantity that we might have also back orders that we need uh, to, to add to our, um, to our order quantity. Um, we are occurring a fixed uh, setup cost or a purchasing cost. And uh, this is a little inconsistent. We denoted it with uh, big K throughout the lecture, so we will do this also here. Uh, then we are facing, or these are the two um, forces in costs that, uh, well, the three that we are regarding. Uh, we have the cost of ordering um, when we place, uh, or the fixed cost in ordering when we are placing um, an order. So we could say that our total cost of uh, Q units is um, composed by the purchasing costs plus inventory holding and our um, shortage costs. So these are the three components that uh, we will be looking at in um, these methods uh, or these models when we consider um, stochastic demand. So uh, we, aiming, we are aiming now at finding an order policy uh, where, for instance, uh, when we are facing uncertain demand, we can use the EOQ formula with back orders or with planned um, shortages, as we have seen beforehand. And um, yeah, take this quantity and abstract from the uncertainty with the demand that, um, and just concerning the average demand. Um, as we have seen already with the EOQ um, model or formula that uh, it uh, is very robust uh, with respect to um, un, um, yeah, to um, uncertainty in our input factors. So one is also the input uh, of our demand that uh, in the deterministic AOQ formula, we are assuming uh, that this is known. Um, and this also here gives a good approximation. So uh, we recall that um, the optimal order quantity uh, for um, planned shortages uh, is stated as follows, and we can use this, uh, of course, to, um, to use it to determine um, the reorder quantity. Um, now the um, more interesting question is uh, how do we choose the reorder point when we are facing uncertain demand? And uh, well, we have first to establish um, or ask our management um, what uh, service level they want to uh, have for their customers. Because every time we encounter a shortage, uh, we cannot fulfill a demand. And that means that one customer has to wait for an item and this can create uh, delusion, uh, unsatisfaction, and um, the worst case, a loss of goodwill of the customer. So he would be going to another um, supplier and would not come back to us. So we will lose them in the long run. Um, we can have different ways of de um, defining the service level. Here are um, some five service level definitions given that I want to clarify also then uh, with respect to, um, to, um, to, a, to the graphic that we will see um, in the following. So we can uh, look at the service level definition that uh, we define it as the probability that uh, we will not have a stock out during uh, the time between an order placement and the receipt of that order. Um, so it's the probability that we have no stock uh, out uh, during the time period. Then we could also look at the service level from the other side and say, uh, we regard the average number of stockouts per year as a service level um, that we want to, to somehow minimize or define how, yeah, how huge this number should be. 
Um, then we uh, look, could look at the average percentage of uh, the annual demand that we have that can be satisfied. Um, that would be then the percentage uh, that uh, we do not incur in stock out or on the other hand that we are fulfilling um, our demand immediately. We could look also at the average delay in filling back orders when we have a stock out. So the time fraction in a circle that uh, we are dealing with back orders or where we have uh, backlogging building up. Or then the average, um, the overall average delay in filling the orders. So um, meaning that um, where we have a delay uh, without a stock out is zero or with uh, a stock out that is uh, positive. Uh, let's consider what uh, is meant by all these uh, definitions. So, for instance, if we look at uh, the first one, that was the probability that no stock outs occur. Um, that would be during the time uh, of the lead time. So we could define it as uh, yeah, probability of no stock outs. That would be in, uh, in the lead time period. Then uh, we have as uh, the second one, the average uh, number of stock outs that can occur. So here we have um, here the back orders uh, filling up in our graphic. So when we number the service levels, this would be then number of stock outs. And here we are counting um, how many um, items um, we are we are backlogging so that we need to add them then afterwards uh, when we reorder. The third definition is the average percentage of satisfied demand. So that uh, could be looked at in this period where we have, um, uh, we regard the average percentage of satisfied demand. And for a fourth one, we have the average delay in filling the back orders. So that would be the time in between when we run out of stock and we are building up our backlogs. So this would be then the average delay in filling back orders or the time that uh, we, are, we are denoting that we have uh, back orders, so we are, we are logging them. Okay, so these are the different service, service level measurements that uh, we can use. We will be in the following looking at the probability that uh, no stock outs occur between uh, the time between the orders. So uh, we will be looking at uh, the first um, service level definition. And afterwards, uh, I want to show you also how a stochastic EOQ model works when we look at the average number of stock outs. So we will be looking at the definition one and two in the following. Okay, so here, um, with respect to uh, now the service level measure one, um, we can have two distinctions uh, with uh, the demand. So once uh, we, um, we need to define the uh, management's desired probability of no stock outs, um, so this is a kind of percentage of uh, order fulfillment. And uh, then we here in the first um, version, we will be looking at uh, the demand that follows, and this is important, a uniform distribution. So here, um, uh, the distribution looks uh, different if we consider our demand. 
then uniform distributions look like this. We have a B and an A as an interval, and during that we have um, yeah, this uniformity of the distribution. This is different uh, to the one that we will be looking when we have uh, the normal, uh, we, we look at um, a standard, um, a normally distributed uh, standard, uh, yeah, normally distributed standard distribution. So, um, well, we have um, determined already um, how to calculate the order quantity. So now what we are aiming at is uh, when we look at our graphic again, um, so we have established uh, how much to order um, our Q level. That would be then denoted here. Uh, and now we want to find out our reorder point. So when should we, should we reorder um, and well, when should we reorder in terms of um, quantities? So when, uh, how many um, items are still in inventory when uh, we place an order? So that is now a little bit uh, more tricky uh, with respect to the calculation um, because we need to define certain things. So here we have now the probability distribution of D that is assumed to be uniform over our interval A and B. And then our reorder quantity is, uh, or our reorder point in terms of quantities, is given by uh, the initial of that interval plus our service level in uh, that interval. Um, because then we can assure that uh, the probability of the demand uh, that is equal or smaller than our reorder point in time um, is equal to our service level. Um, the mean of the distribution is given as follows. So we look at the interval and then we divide it by two. Um, and now the uh, amount of our safety stock uh, that gives our expected inventory before the receipt of the order um, is provided by the reorder point minus the mean of the distribution. So our safety stock is given here. Um, when uh, we have a positive lead time, then uh, this would be, and we want to consider or always have a, a kind of a safety uh, amount uh, of items on stock, then we don't want our inventory to uh, drop below this level, then we would uh, encounter, as we see here, where this is the case, we would encounter back orders. It can be that uh, in this model we, we will have shortages because we have random demand. Um, so this can happen, but uh, this is why we want to have a safety stock uh, there what, that, um, that hedges against um, our inventory becoming negative. So um, yeah, we don't want to, to let this happen. So we need to consider our reorder point and then our safety stock. And then we get, uh, if we, um, if we um, now take our reorder point and uh, we um, subtract the, the mean of the distribution from it, then we get to our safety stock. And this can be done then um, by some algebra. So we have uh, the reorder um, quantity given and we take it plus minus our um, mean of the distribution and then we get this uh, following term. We will have uh, soon also an, um, an example to this. Um, yeah, here we have two things together. So um, we have uh, still to choose the reorder point and under our service uh, level measurement or definition one. So we choose uh, from management now our service level uh, degree um, that uh, we want to be fulfilled. And then uh, we uh, put that into our formula for the reorder, quant for the reorder uh, point. 
and uh, and that's normally it uh, or the uh, the whole um, method for finding now the um, the Q or the, the reorder quantity. So we take the EOQ formula for that and then uh, we choose the, the service level and uh, then we use our formula for the, um, for the uniform distribution to find the reorder point. The same can we do now for uh, when we assume to have uh, a normal distribution where we are given with the mean and, uh, and the variance then uh, we also select um, our service level, um, our service level, and uh, then we would work with the table of normal distribution uh, to determine the value for our reorder point. So we uh, find the value of uh, now this is given k uh, one minus the uh, service level, also in inventory uh, management you will find uh, the denotation zeta for this because I think it's uh, a little bit uh, yeah, irritating um, to use k as we have uh, the grade k given already for the fixed order quantity. So uh, when you regard also the inventory uh, theory um, literature, then you will find it as a z value. Um, so also here, the formula normally is given by r is equal to the mean plus um, some zeta value that we find in the table for the normal distribution with respect to our service level and then multiplied by the sigma. And the safety stock calculation is then um, this reorder point minus uh, the mean of it. And also here you can think of it as being the zeta value and then this is zeta multiplied by our sigma. Okay, let's have uh, an example for this. So we uh, are first looking at, um, at, the, um, at a demand that is um, that follows a normal distribution. So of course here you just need to plug in uh, the data. So we are focusing on uh, TV sets where setup costs for producing speakers are $12,000. We have an inventory holding cost of uh, 3 cent uh, per speaker and per month, a unit shortage cost of $1.1 per speaker per month and a replenishment lead time of one month. Um, demand uh, set is random with following a normal distribution with a mean of 8,000, standard deviation of sigma is 2,000, and we have uh, given from management a desired service level of uh, 95%. So here uh, we use the OQ formula with short, short planned shortages to uh, derive the order quantity. So we plug in our data and then we get 28,540 for it. And now we can uh, look at, uh, yeah, we first need to look at the service level that was 95%. Then uh, we look at uh, the table for the normal distribution, um, the Z value of it of 95%. So let's uh, take the table for the normal distribution. Um, that uh, you can take from the internet or also from our course material. So you will see that here we have zeta is the area under the standard normal curve to the left of uh, zeta. And uh, we have given now a service level that was 95%. So we uh, search here for the level that goes close enough to the um, 95% and we can then read from our table the z value that is 1.65. So here um, we have used uh, another way um, using Excel for instance to, to derive the value. So this one is a little bit more um, precise than the one that we get from the, the from the table, but we can denote this is 1.65. And then we plug it into our, um, our function for the reorder point. 
that was uh, the mean plus our zeta multiplied by the sigma. And uh, this is uh, given as follows here. And we get uh, as a reorder point 11,290. So when that point is reached um, with a lead time of one month, uh, then uh, we would uh, place an order. So this is when inventory hits this amount. Then we place an order. And our safety stock is then uh, the, um, the reorder point amount minus the mean. So we have 11,290 minus uh, the 8,000. So our safety stock is 3,290. Let's look at our graphic for this. So here now for our values of uh, when we have um, uh, a normal distribution, we have our Q that was given with... Um, 28,540, our reorder point is at 11,290, and our safety stock is 3,290. For an example, when we have a uniform demand, so demand is uniform. Uh, we need, uh, we assume that we have our service level still at 0 0.95. And now we need uh, the um, interval for of the uniform distribution. So let's assume that A is 2,000 items and B is uh, 4,500 items. Uh, then we have as a formula for the reorder point A plus L uh, and then taken the interval multiplied and then we have for the formula as our surf, a safety stock we have uh, the reorder point minus the expected demand uh, that can be, yeah, I, I spare now the derivation of it because you have the formula in the lecture slide. So we get L minus one half and this multiplied by the interval of the, of the distribution. So uh, if we plug in our values, then we have... Um, 2000 plus uh, 0 0.95, 4500 minus 2000. And this then is together 4375. And for our safety stock, we get 0 0.95 minus 0 0.5. And this is 4,500 minus 2,000. And this becomes then 1,125. The next system that I want to show you is uh, when we regard a service level, the number of stock outs. So uh, we are facing... Once again, stochastic demand. So this is our usual graphic. And we define a safety stock that we don't want our inventory to drop below. And we uh, have now, well, we order some items and then we have a depletion that is now maybe looking, it go, doesn't go up, but the depletion now is uh, not linear anymore, but can, can vary. I said it should not go up. Like this, for instance. 
and uh, then it might drop further and further until we may also find some um, some back ordering. Um, so the time between um, the um, we are placing an order and we are receiving it is our um, reorder point. So here we want to uh, receive the order. And uh, for that purpose, we have uh, we have some kind of uh, um, of lead time. So let's assume this is our lead time, and then here we need to place an order. So in time that uh, that uh, we are waiting for the order to arrive, we have a depletion that should not go beyond our safety stock level, but it could, as we have stochastic demand. Mm. So our safety stock uh, can be defined now by the following formula. We have our point R given here. So R minus um, our safety stock time, so the time that we are facing demand in the lead time, that is exactly this um, interval, uh, we need to, to, yeah, um, to um, subtract it from the reorder in order to get our, our safety stock. Um, so now the cost that uh, we encounter in uh, the system is given as follows. Uh, as it is a different uh, inventory system, I denote the total cost as G from our order quantity and our stochastic demand. And that is now given um, as usual by our purchasing costs. plus our inventory holding costs. And these now, this is now the average uh, order quantity that uh, we also regard in, um, in, the, um, in the economic order quantity formula. And now we need to add our safety stock given by the reorder point minus um, the demand that we face in our lead time and plus now the probability or the shortage uh, shortage cost that we may encounter. So the um, shortage cost multiplied by the demand and now multiplied by, and this is new, the number of stock outs. And this is divided then by our Q. So these uh, N from R is now the number of stock outs. And this is, as I said, our inventory holding costs. And this is our shortage costs. After some algebra, we get for the optimal order quantity, the following formula. That is 2 multiplied D multiplied now K plus our shortage cost factor multiplied by the number of shortages. And this divided by the inventory holding cost factor. Find now the reorder point. We need uh, to consider the cumulative uh, distribution function of uh, the uh, of the reorder point uh, quantity I call it and this is then the optimal order quantity multiplied by our inventory cost divided by uh, the shortage uh, cost multiplied by our demand um, yeah this is uh, fmr is our cumulative distribution function um, with respect to R. 
where we have uh, the probability that the demand is smaller or equal to a certain amount and this is valid for all the intervals from um, negative infinity from our point that we look at and the positive infinity. We have been uh, discussing beforehand that uh, when we are facing um, uniform demand or normally distributed demand for the first uh, service level that we were looking at, then we use uh, the EOQ formula as an approximation. And then from there we go to um, find the reorder point. Now I want to show you an algorithm that uh, is an approximation algorithm that comes closer and closer and closer to, um, to the optimal order quantity and reorder point, um, as I will show you now. With, uh, um, I think this uh, approximation algorithm that I will show you now is uh, very interesting for your understanding. Um, we will start uh, in the first step also with using the um, EOQ formula. to find an order quantity, then in step two, um, we will find our first reorder point, I name it zero, from um, the one minus the cumulative distribution function of R that was defined, um, sorry, that is defined as follows, as 1 minus q0, we call it, as it is the first uh, economic order quantity that we um, derive. And then we use the following formula. Then we find our first reorder point um, and the z-value for it. Then we will look up um, the z-value that uh, comes from, um, from this uh, value that we will get from step uh, 2. And then step 4, we will solve our first R1 with the formula of the mean plus the z-value multiplied by the sigma. And then in step 5, we will calculate um, the number of stockouts and from R number of stockouts or of shortages that is also given by the um, by the sigma multiplied by L from Z and L from Z is the standard normal loss function. And then we use it in deriving or in calculating the next uh, order quantity. And then we would repeat from step two until um, the values will not be changing anymore. And we are going closer and closer together so we can accept uh, the order quantity and the reorder point in time. Let's take into consideration to see how the algorithm works uh, the example of automotive uh, oil filters. This example is uh, taken from the book of Namia's Production and Operations Analysis, a very good book, by the way. Um, so we have given a purchase price of uh, $1.5. We have a fixed ordering cost of $100. Then our um, inventory holding cost fund uh, is 28% of the, um, the is the average annual uh, rate, 
uh, to the with relation to the purchase price. So here uh, we calculate uh, the average annual holding cost factor. We have a lead time of five months, and our demand is normally distributed with a mean of 280 and the standard variation of uh, 77. And there we need to still con to consider here um, the lead time. So we have um, a standard deviation of 172.18 in total. And we have our shortage uh, cost that is $12.08 for, uh, yeah, for having shortages. So, uh, we need still to, uh, we want to have annual values that we regard. So here we still need to do some work with respect to the demand. So our demand in total is 280. For annual values there we get uh, 3,360. And um, then the same for our mean we have 280 multiplied by 5. This is uh, our demand multiplied by lead time. And this is 1,400. Sorry. So we go to the algorithm step 1. And we uh, take the OQ formula to derive the order quantity and this is 2 times 100 multiplied by 3360 divided by 0 0.42 and here we get for first order quantity to 1265 now step two is uh, find the R0 from one minus the cumulative density function. And this is given by one minus Q0, which is our AOQ multiplied by inventory holding cost factor divided by shortages cost factor minus uh, multi multiplied by the demand and there we get we use um, the AOQ as Q0 then we multiply by the inventory holding cost factor and we have then the other values plugged in and there we get a value of, um, yeah, here I forgot the minus one, uh, the one minus, and this is 0 0.0124, and if we take the minus, so this is then 0. 9876 and as the next step we look up the table uh, for the z value that uh, yeah for 0 0.9876 and this I want to show you now so uh, we have this table still here now we are looking for the um, what is it 0 0.9876 Seven six, and this is between these two, so it is two point two four. We are going with that one. So this is two point two four is our z value, and now we solve in step four. Uh, 
for r1 and that was the mean plus z value multiplied by the standard deviation. So we plug in our values 172.18 plus um, no, 2.24 multiplied by the standard deviation 1400 and this is 1785.68 for the reorder quantity. Now with this value in step 5 we calculate the number of uh, stockouts the n from r and that was calculated by the sigma multiplied by the loss function of our z value that was 2.24 and this is then the sigma is 1400 multiplied by now we need to look the loss function value up for the value of z 2.24 uh, that is given here and we see this is approximately what we had as our um, level for our, our number for 1 minus uh, the cumulative density function for r and now we see our loss function value is 0 0.004 so we plug that in, 4,4 four, uh, to be precise, and here we get 0.7576. So we use this value now to calculate the uh, optimal order quantity or our next order quantity. Um, the formula for that was 2 multiplied d multiplied k plus the shortage cost, the number of shortages. Um, this is now from zero, no, from one. And this divided by the holding cost factor. And if we plug in our values that I leave out now, uh, we get 1,324.82, so approximately 1,324. And if we compare this uh, to our uh, AOQ formula with 1,265, um, we see that this is uh, much higher. So now we repeat uh, step uh, two. So um, we take now, we use this value now, the, the next uh, order quantity that we have calculated to plug it in uh, to redefine our, to reget our reorder point. So we use it now, uh, or substitute, we substitute now Q1 in. 1 minus f from r to get the reorder point and here that was given by 1 minus q multiplied by h and divided by the penalty cost of shortages multiplied by demand. So we use this now and plug it in here. So this part here, if we plug that in is 1,324 multiplied by the inventory holding cost factor. Um, the rest stays the same. And this is then a value of 0 0.01293. And I take 
1 minus of this value, then we get 0 0.98707. So uh, if we look up now, um, so this would be repeat step 3. We look up again um, the Z value. In the normal distribution table. So this is quite close to the point where we were already, seven, uh, 0 0.987 and then 0. So it's between this value, a little bit closer with uh, 2.23. So that value is 2.23. And the loss function value is from that value then the following. Uh, 0 0.87. Um, yeah, you can calculate it closer or better if you use uh, Excel formula. This should be now 0 0.0045. So first we were with the loss function at 0 0.0044. Now we are at 45, a little bit um, higher than before. Um, then we repeat... Step four and solve for R2 that is given by the mean plus I keep the order of the formula, the zeta value multiplied by sigma. So it's 1400 plus, so the mean plus uh, the set value two point two three multiplied by sigma by the sigma value and that gives in total now a value of one thousand seven hundred eighty three point nine six and now we um, repeat step five in calculating the number of shortages that was given by standard deviation multiplied by loss function from that value. And that is and we plug in our values, the following, and that gives us then um, number of shortages, 0 0.7748. And this now we use in the next order quantity that we want to calculate. And this is then given by two times the de annual demand multiplied by fixed ordering cost plus the shortage cost of the number multiplied by the number of shortages. That is fairly small now. And divided by the inventory holding cost factor. And this is then 1,326.5, so it's approximately 1,326. And if you look now at, uh, at what we have uh, taken beforehand as an order quantity, 
we have 1324 and now we have 1326 so um, we have a difference of uh, two two items so we are close enough so we can say that the optimal order quantity is 1326 and uh, the optimal reorder point is at 1784 um, rounded up.